Hello, it's Dr. Abstract, and we did a Zoom call, a Zim Zoom call, and I'd like to take you through what happened at that Zoom call, the announcement. So here's what I look like. Ah, so here I am on Zoom, you can imagine. And what happened was, is right at the end, the Zoom call, well, the, the power went out and the Zoom call ended up not being recorded. So I'm going to tell you all about what happened. Are you ready? Yes. So as people were coming into the Zim Zoom, we showed them this article that we had just had published on the JavaScript in Medium. And this was an invite for generative art makers and interactive artists. So these are for people who are using processing, P5.js, the JavaScript version. And we're inviting them to sort of go beyond their traditional art. Here's their traditional art. And they use something like Dat GUI to use sliders and dials here to change the art. But we're suggesting them that there's two ways that Zim can go beyond that to advance their art. One is embedded interfaces, and the other is crafted interactivity. So I don't want to go through the whole article in depth here. What I'll do is I'll post a link to it. But we introduced to them uh, Zim, and we talked about embedded interfaces. Isn't that beautiful? Where the interface is part of the art. And what this can do for them is sort of move them a bit more for a final product that would be maybe used in marketing or advertising or uh, that uh, field. And they could get paid for that. So how exciting. And we show them that Zim has the same type of thing as processing, where this part right here with the uh, looping through the stuff and, and doing the push and the pop, and the way it works is the same as in processing. So that's in here. We show them that code. But we also show them the various interfaces that, all, that you guys all know and love, including books. So you can have a book of your art. We've got sliders and dials and animating to sound. And you can see that this looks a little bit more finalized or polished that would perhaps be used in the interactive agency world. So we, that's one, one part is the embedded interfaces that, that look like the colors of the art and uh, just sort of aren't as generic as that GUI. And the second way is with crafted interactivity where you can do the generative art, but let the people let the people move the pen in a sense. <laughs> so uh, here's the generative art part and the tools to be able to animate the size of, of the pen, for instance, and then people can draw their own art with it. So your art, in a sense, is providing them with an app or an environment in which the people are empowered and can make art. And Zim is great for that. We do it all the time. So here's an example of a truche maker and the interfaces for that. Uh, okay, so like I said, didn't want to go through <laughs> through the whole thing. I think if you know Zim, you know that we can do this stuff. This was an article to promote Zim to artists, and it relates to the type of launch that we're doing. Are you ready? So uh, Zim, 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 right? We now have a new version of Zim, and it's not Zim 1. Zim Duo, Zim Tri, Zim Fourth, Zim V, Zim Six. This is the Zim Six look right here. It wasn't Zim Hep, Zim Oct, where we introduced style, Zim Neo, where we introduced all that curves and animation along paths and stuff. It wasn't Zim Ten, and it wasn't Zim Cat. It's now Bum 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 Bum. Zim NFT. So, isn't that cool? Zim NFT. So we're making an NFT, non-fungible token. We're making an NFT of Zim, and we're going to give that NFT to all of you. We'll also show you how to receive that NFT. You'll have to make a wallet, which is free. And it, this will all be free. And it, we transfer with, with Tezos. So we'll get you to make a wallet. I'll give you some Tezos, and then you can buy this for pennies, in a sense. And when Zim becomes world famous, <laughs> you can sell if you want. It's a collectible. You could sell that. And um, this NFT right here is interactive. Boop, boop, boop. 
So basically, Zim will be not quite on the blockchain, but the idea of it is, this NFT is, and then Zim itself uh, links through to the, um, the interplanetary file system. So that's how they do interactive NFTs like this. And this NFT specifically will be used as a template as well to show people how to make interactive NFTs. Here's the first one that we did. It's on a site called Hicketnuck. This is not it right here, but as you can see, um, there's a lot of uh, pixel-based art or very flat sort of colorful art, as well as, um, well, just all sorts of art. This is Hicketnuck. And uh, it's a large portal for for art. We have ours there. I'm going to show you it. It's uh, managing assets and it's right here. It's called Bloob. So before we, we try it out here, let's have a read. Bloob, a fascinating gadget by Dr. Abstract that lets you scrub through colorful noise. The left dial changes the speed, including reverse. The right dial changes the curvature from smooth to bumpy. Pressing the pattern changes the color. Bloob is the first NFT to be minted that uses the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework. Inventor Dr. Abstract, the Zim founders, a Canadian New Media Awards winner, has been making digital gadgets since the 90s at danzen.com and will continue to do so until he's in the 90s. So expect a long line of collectibles from the inaugural member of the Gadget Minters. <laughs> There you go. You heard it first. Well, second, if you came to the Zoom, the Zim Zoom, you would have heard it first. This is the uh, this is the summary of the Zim Zoom. Um, right. I've been making gadgets all my life through Dan Zen. There was even a category from it, from Op Artica to you know the, these interactive works. Many, 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 uh, perhaps a hundred. And I will continue to do so, and have continued to do do so in Zim. This could become collectible. And it's available <laughs> it's available to you for 12 Tezos, which is about $40. So the prices of these artwork, let's take a look at it. There's five editions. And if we open this up like that, you can see that, wow, indeed, it's interactive. I can change the curvature to very spiky. I can scrub the speed here so fast to slow, even to rewind that that's really, uh, that's noise that we're seeing and we're scrubbing the noise equation. This is Zim, an interactive NFT. And I think it really stands out amongst the NFTs. It's, it's useful, it's simple, uh, but hopefully beautiful and hopefully collectible. <laughs> so there you go. To create this was quite easy. You come here, you go to OBGKT, like you have to set up a wallet. This is a wallet and we'll go through all of that in the zimjs.com slash NFT. It's not there yet, but it will be. And that will be a place where we'll tell you what's going on here and we'll help you through it all. And you upload an object that is a zip file. So you just put those local zim files in, in a folder basically and upload it. I, I could do that in five, 10 minutes now. Amazing. So that's super, that's here on Hicket Nunk and people clapped at the Zim Zoom for all of this. It's very exciting. I think marketing Zim as one of the first, if not the first frameworks to be an NFT is pretty darn cool. So uh, yay. Some other things that uh, we talked about in the Zim Zoom was the, the new technology that will be happening. So the, the, main, the main announcement is the Zim NFT and it's primarily more of a, a marketing feel, although that's an exciting field that perhaps some of you will like. Uh, but from changes to Zim itself, here's some of the things that we were thinking. If I refresh this here, we've got a squiggle that um, I'm going to cut up the blob. So I hit cut. And what happened there is the squiggle ended up making two blobs. And here as well, we're going to, to cut this, this new blob here that has been made. We're going to cut that up based on this squiggle right here. So we move the squiggle and do a cut and take a look at this. We can move that along this squiggle. There isn't another framework that can do that, dragging along uh, a squiggle. And so we uh, put this in here like that and we're going to cut this one up as well. You ready? And we cut, cut. Um, 
Then we joined those. So as we were making this app, we realized that there were a couple methods that could use to, that we could use to help. And then we can add some eyeballs to this or what have you and tile it and you get a tessellation. Very cool, huh? So let's take a look at the code here just to let you know what's planned for the blob and the squiggle in the upcoming version of Zim. We needed to reverse. If, if we take a look here, that means I have to go find that again. As I cut this, here's the squiggle that we had. Here's the, the same squiggle down below. If we need to make a blob of this, we have to come along this squiggle, the points of that squiggle down here, and that's really no problem, but then backwards along the squiggle. So the points have to be reversed. And when you reverse the points of the squiggle, uh, you've got to switch these two things around. You've got to switch the two sticks around so that if this point's on the other side because it's reversed, then it doesn't... <laughs> anyway, blah bitty blah bitty blah Let's go... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's go find that in the code. To reverse the points, we reverse the points. But then we have to swap, and that's right here. Right here is us swapping the sticks or the like the the squares of that we're swapping them like so and that's all that's needed it's just a little bit tricky to think about don't worry about the height there the height there is saying add a certain height to each of the squiggle points and that's what makes this squiggle get copied down below here but that's that's the reversing that we're interested in there the other thing is is when you go and add two squiggles together imagine that we're joining the end of this squiggle onto a squiggle here um, the ends of the squiggle only get one stick like that. They don't get another side. You see how this, this part has two sticks? Two sticks? The end only gets one. Well, the other end will also have one. We've got to basically take that other stick and add it to this point so that this point now, which will be in the middle, you know, once we join the two, we'll have two sticks to it, and then we delete the second point. So that's not all that hard to do either, but it's a little tricky conceptually so let's go find it here in the code where we did that a couple times as well give the right stick of the common point and uh, should make a join a join function to the squiggle and blob to do this that's our little note saying hey we should add that and it just looks like this so it's a little bit of code there and then that's us removing the extra point that gets left so it's not that hard to do <laughs> but it's sort of tricky sounding and and if you didn't even know if that works you wouldn't even try it well, it worked because we tried it and it worked. It's like, yay. So those will be extra things there. The major technical announcement, though, is the following. Are you ready? And this made lots of people happy. Bum, bum, bum. Do you see what it is? Uh, well, I'll type something here. Editable text on Canvas. Wow. So there it is. This is on the Canvas. There we are animating that editable text and it's going underneath a canvas object. Here is a diagonal, there is um, uh, you know, alpha down. And so at the moment, this one is increasing the size of the field there, but what we're going to do, and what we have done already, it's just not in this test, is we'll make that a box. And as we type over to the right, we'll scroll the whole text in the box and then we'll, um, we'll mask it. So it'll look just like an input field in HTML, for instance. And as we use our arrows to move along here, we'll scroll it again. And we've already done that. That's uh, going pretty well. At the moment as well, what's happening, and thank you, Zunter, for doing this. Um, we thought it was impossible. He did it. He did it with a second text field, like or a real HTML text field that is invisible and hidden. And that means this should pop up the, uh, the soft keyboard on mobile as well. Of course, we'll test that. And it seems pretty solid. So that, that is so cool. I can even double click and select everything. So everything kind of matches. This is just showing what's in the HTML field as, as we're going there. So we're working on that. We probably won't get this to a text area this launch, but maybe that will be in the future where it can be a big uh, box of editable text that is on the canvas. But right now it's an in, it will be an input field with a certain dimension that is on the on the canvas. So that is super news. We're so happy. Thank you, Zenter, for working on that. And we'll continue to integrate that in over the next, we'll probably be launching by the end of August. So over the next month coming up here, the August, 
will uh, launch somewhere in there, maybe three weeks from now, before September anyway. So look for that, Zim NFT. And uh, thank you all for those of you who came out to the Zim Zoom. It was great to have you there. Sorry we didn't get that recorded because the power went out. (laughs) No big deal. Sorry I didn't get to say goodbye to you. But please always come by Zim js.com slash slack and say hello or zimjs.com slash discord and we would love to have you there if you're new to zim please come on in to those locations zimjs.com slash slack zimjs.com slash discord the zooms themselves can be found at zimjs.com slash zoom we do them every couple months or so we probably won't do another one until the autumn as we go through the summer I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night, and thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.